Hi, room seven and room 13. All right, here we are, fifth reading from Pippi Longstockings by Astrid Lindegren. And for the fifth reading, we're starting chapter four. <gasps> what? Chapter four? Chapter four is called Pippi Goes to School. <gasps> I thought in the last chapter, after that altercation with the policeman, that she wasn't going to go to school, that she didn't think she had any reason to go to school. Hmm, I wonder what has changed. Well, let's find out. Of course, Tommy and Annika went to school. Each morning at 8 o'clock, they trotted off hand in hand, swinging their school bags. At that time, Pippi was usually grooming her horse or dressing Mr. Nielsen in his little suit or else she was doing her morning exercises, which meant turning 43 somersaults in a row. Then she would sit down at the kitchen table and utterly happily drink a large cup of coffee and eat a piece of bread and cheese. Tommy and Annika always looked longingly towards Villa Villa Coola as they started off to school. They would much rather have gone to play with Pippi if only Pippi had been going to school too. Oh, that would be something else for them. Just think what fun we could have on the way home from school, said Tommy. Yes, and on the way to school too, said Annika. The more they thought about it, the worse they felt to think that Pippi did not go to school. And at last they decided to try and convince her to begin. You can't imagine, Pippi, what a nice teacher we have, said Tommy one afternoon when he and Annika had come for a visit at Villa Villa Coola after they'd finished their homework. If only, if you only knew what fun it is in school, Annika added, I'd die if I couldn't go to school. Pippi sat in a chair in the middle of the kitchen, bathing her feet in a tub. She said nothing, but just wiggled her toes and splashed around for a while, so the water got everywhere. You don't have to stay very long, continued Tommy, just until two o'clock. Oh yes, and besides, we get Christmas vacation, and Easter vacation, and summer vacation, said Annika. Now Pippi bit her toe thoughtfully, but still said nothing. And then suddenly, as if she had made some decision, she poured all the water out onto the kitchen floor so that Mr. Nielsen, who was sitting nearby playing with a mirror, got absolutely soaked. It's not fair, said Pippi, sternly without paying any attention to Mr. Nielsen's puzzled look and now his wet pants. It is absolutely unfair. I don't intend to stand for it. What's the matter now, asked Tommy. Well, in four months, it will be Christmas, and then you'll have Christmas vacation. But well, what'll I get? Now Pippi's voice sounded sad. Oh, no Christmas vacation, not even the tiniest bit of Christmas vacation, she complained. Something will have to be done about that. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning, I will begin school. Tommy and Annika clapped their hands with delight. Hooray! We'll wait for you outside our gate at eight o'clock. Oh no, said Pippi. I can't begin as early as that. And besides, I'm going to ride to school. And ride she did. Exactly at 10 o'clock the next day, she lifted her horse off the porch. And a little later, all the people in the town ran to their windows to see what horse it was that was running away. Now that is to say, they thought he was running away, but it was only Pippi in a bit of a hurry to get to school. She galloped wildly into the schoolyard, jumped off the horse, tied him to a tree, and burst into the schoolroom with such a noise and clatter that Tommy and Annika and all their classmates jumped in their seats. Hi there, cried Pippi, waving her big hat. Did I get here in time for the plethocation tables? Tommy and Annika had told their teacher that a new girl named Pippi Longstocking was coming, and the teacher had already heard about Pippi in this little town. 
And as she was a very pleasant teacher, she decided to do all that she could to make Pippi happy in school. Pippi threw herself down on an empty bench without having been invited to do so, but the teacher paid no attention to her kind of careless manner. She simply said in a friendly voice, Welcome to school, little Pippi. I hope that you will enjoy yourself here and learn a great deal. <gasps> yes, and I hope I'll get some Christmas vacation, said Pippi. That is the reason I've come. It's only fair, you know. Now, if you would first tell me your whole name, said the teacher, then I'll register you in school. <clears throat> Pippi cleared her throat. My name is Pippolotta Delicatessa Window Shade Mackerel Mint Ephraim's Daughter Longstocking, daughter of Captain Ephraim Longstocking, Stocking, formerly the Terror of the Sea, now a cannibal king. Pippi is really the only my nickname because Papa thought that Pippolotta was too long to say. Hmm, indeed, said the teacher. Well then, we shall call you Pippi too. But now, she continued, suppose we test you a little and see what you know. You are a big girl and no doubt you know a great deal already. Let us begin with arithmetic. Arithmetic is math. Pippi, can you tell me what seven and five are? Pippi, astonished and dismayed, looked at her and said, Well, if you don't know that yourself, you needn't think I'm going to tell you. All the children stared in horror at Pippi, and the teacher explained that no one should answer that way in school. Well, I beg your pardon, said Pippi. I didn't know. I won't do it again. No, let us hope not, said the teacher. And now I will tell you that seven and five are twelve. <gasps> See that, said Pippi. You knew it yourself. Why are you asking then? The teacher decided to act as if nothing unusual were happening and went on with her examination. Well now, Pippi, how much do you think eight and four are? Oh, about 67, hazard Pippi. Of course not, said the teacher. Eight and four are also 12. <gasps> well now, really, said Pippi, this is carrying things too far. You just said that seven and five are 12. There ought to be some rhyme and reason to things, even in school. And furthermore, if you are so childishly interested in this foolishness, why don't you sit down in a corner and do your own arithmetic and leave us alone so we can play tag? Well, the teacher decided that there was no point in trying to teach Pippi any more arithmetic. She began to ask the other children the arithmetic questions. Can Tommy answer this one, she asked. If Lisa has seven apples and Axel has nine apples, how many apples do they have altogether? Yes, you tell them, Tommy, Pippi interrupted. And tell me too, now, if Lisa gets a stomachache and Axel gets more of a stomachache, Whose fault is it and where did they get hold of the apples in the first place? The teacher tried to pretend she hadn't heard and turned now to Annika. Now, Annika, here's an example for you. Gustav was with his schoolmates on a picnic. He had a quarter when he started out and only seven cents when he got home. How much did he spend? Yes, indeed, said Pippi. And I also want to know, why did he spend so much? And if it was candy that he bought, did he brush his teeth afterwards? The teacher, in that moment, decided to give up on arithmetic altogether. She thought maybe Pippi would prefer to learn to read. So she took out some pretty little cards with pictures and letters. And so she took out some pretty little cards with pictures and letters and placed one in front of Pippi. Now, Pippi, she said briskly, you'll see a goat 
and at the front of the word is the letter G. Oh, that I'll never believe, said Pippi. I think it looks exactly like a wiggly line. But what I'd really like to know is what exactly does a wiggly line have to do with a goat? Well, the teacher took out another card with a picture of a snake on it and told Pippi that the letter on that one was an S. Pippi looked at the card. Hmm. Speaking of snakes, said Pippi, I will never ever forget the time that I had a fight with a huge snake in India. You can't imagine what a dreadful snake it was. 14 meters long and mad as a hornet. And every day, this snake would eat five children and two children for dessert. And one time he came and he wanted me for dessert and he wound himself around me. Ah! But I've been around a bit and I said, and I hit him in the head, bang, and then he hissed. And then I hit him again, bingo, I knocked him dead. And so indeed, yes, that is the letter S, and it is the most remarkable letter. Pippi had to stop to catch her breath after that story, and the teacher had now begun to think that Pippi was perhaps a slightly unruly and troublesome child. She decided that, for now, the whole class should have some drawing time. <laughs> Surely, Pippi could sit still and be quiet and draw. Got the teacher? She took up paper and pencils and passed them out to the children. Now you may draw whatever you wish, she said, and sat down at her desk and began to correct homework. In a little while, she looked up to see how the drawing was going. And that is where I'm going to stop. And don't you believe it, Pippi's up to something. I hope you enjoyed reading number five. We'll see you on Thursday for the next one. Bye, room seven and room 13. <laughs>